So I happened to be reading the Gospel of John this morning, and uh, toward the end of the first chapter, Jesus performs his first miracle on the planet. <laughs> now there's something significant about the first time that you, that you do something, especially if you're in the position of a great soul like Jesus. And I found it fascinating as I sat there thinking about it, that his first miracle was to be at a wedding party long after the people had been drinking, so much drinking that they had run out of wine. So he fills, has several jugs, big barrels, filled with water, and he turns it into wine. And it's served to the host of the party, and the host comments that this is extraordinary wine, it's really good wine, and says to, uh, says to the person uh, who's organizing the party, most people serve the best wine at the end of the party, but you've saved the best, I mean, the best wine at the beginning of the party, and you've saved it for, uh, for the end of the party. So he commented on that. Now, I find that quite lovely, that here Jesus is at a party where there's lots of drinking and celebrating going on. They run out of wine and he makes the wine, and he makes great wine. So good that the, that the host has to comment on it. So what, you might think. But here's a holy man, maybe one of the holiest of men, at a party, making wine, making the best wine. So what do I take from that? What can you take from that? I don't know for sure. It's a story in the Bible. But what it says to me is that Jesus, or God, the Beloved, the Divine Spirit, that divinity within ourselves, as it's represented to us, is a part of our life, is an intimate part of our life, is there celebrating the big moments of our life. It's there during our conscious times and our unconscious times, and that it's always providing the best for us, and that even something worldly like a party and wine drinking will be better with spiritual awakening, <laughs> will be better with, with that consciousness of, of divinity within us. And that, that, that shouldn't be set aside, that God is willing to be where you are, to live as you live, to know you at that level of intimacy, and that the change doesn't have to be made first. The turn doesn't have to happen first before that divine spirit is available to us, before that joy of life can become known to us. That God isn't waiting for something to change in your life. God isn't waiting for something to become good enough for him. He's not fascinated with your impurity and insisting that it all get taken care of before the relationship begins. No, he'll meet you where you are and give you the best of the best from the beginning. He'll be close. He'll be loving. He'll be accepting and he'll walk beside you wherever you walk, and he will make that holy for you, and he will inspire you to things that you have only imagined, to states of mind and understanding and the bliss of life that really has become legendary.